So continuing the series on the HTML5 canvas, I want to talk about how to draw lines and curves. My uh, simple example that I've got here right now, what I'm doing is if I click once, I'm picking a starting point, and then as I release the click, that's my ending point, and I'm just drawing straight lines. So I click here, I drag, and then I release. And every time I click and drag, I'm just creating a new couple of points. And we're just drawing line segments. So let's take a look at how to do this, and then we'll get into the curves. Inside my DOM content loaded event, I'm setting up my context as 2D for doing the drawing. I've got my width and height of the canvas being set, and I've got listeners for mouse down and mouse up. So the mouse down, I'm grabbing these coordinates, and that's where I'm writing out from this value. When I release, that's the two value. Now I'm setting styles with lines that we're drawing. We've got line cap, which is the end of the line. Now I've got square here, uh, but when they're connecting, they're uh, a little bit shorter, they're buttered up against each other. Uh, and then round, if we change this to round, you can see that there is a little bit of a rounded edge to the end of them. There, you can see that there's a little bit of rounding taking place here. So that's the different values for line cap. Line width is just simply the thickness of the line. And then there's also stroke style, which is giving us the color. And inside my start function, you can see that's where I'm setting stroke style. All of these things, line cap, line width, stroke style, they're all being set on this variable, CTX, which is the context. That's the context. And most of what you do with the canvas, it's the context object that does the work, that does the drawing. Okay, so inside my start function, when the mouse down gets a mouse down event is triggered, the start function gets called. Begin path is the first thing I'm doing. Begin path, it's like creating a brand new layer on the drawing. So here, you can imagine there's one layer. I've drawn this on it. If I didn't call begin path, and I just said stroke style, and I'm going to call my move to and line to methods, these are the ones that are going to do the actual drawing, they would be connecting this with the next one. It was the same thing when I was drawing the shapes, the rectangles and the ellipses and the arcs. Um, if you don't call that begin path, you start to connect all these things together. They, they become one big shape. Um, now, sometimes that's what you want. You want a big shape so that you can then give it a fill and it will connect all those pieces. But a lot of the times you don't want them connected. You want them as separate pieces. You just call begin path at the beginning of every drawing so that you get this fresh new clean layer that you're drawing on. So stroke style, begin path. So I've said I'm starting a new path. I'm setting the color that I'm going to use for the drawing with stroke style. Now I could do stroke style up here inside of this function as well, but I want to make sure in case I do something else on the canvas, I want to use this color specifically for drawing my lines. And then I'm writing out my offset X and offset Y. These are the coordinates for where I'm clicking. So the mouse down, the mouse up are happening at offset X, offset Y. Move to means take this imaginary pen that you're going to be drawing with and move it to the coordinates where you're going to start. So if I click here and then I drag it over, I had moved to that first point where I clicked and then when I release, that's where I'm calling line to. So move to just moves the pen to a new location. Line to actually draws from wherever you move to, to these coordinates. Now move to line to, that creates sort of the path. It creates a point that goes from here and here, connects these two points together, draws a path between them. And then when I call stroke, that's what's actually making this green line appear. It's the stroke that does the applying of the color to the path that you've just created. That's why we say begin path, move to line to. Begin path, we're gonna create a path on the screen that the stroke will follow afterwards. Okay, and then that's it, that's straight lines. Move to, line to, stroke. Begin path at the beginning of each one if you want them to be treated as separate lines. All right, now I have two other things here for drawing curves. There's the quadratic curve and the Bezier curve. 
The difference between these two, and I'm going to uncomment the quadratic curve, and I'm going to comment out this end with the line two. So we'll take a look at this one in here. You can see it's very similar function. Instead of line two, we call quadratic curve two. Now the line two, it only took two values, an x and a y point. So we just said, go from here to here. That's all the line two does. Quadratic curve has a starting point and an ending point, but there's also a midpoint. So if I were to set a point right here and say, I want to draw through this point right here, this is my midpoint that I'm setting. It will draw an imaginary line from here to that midpoint and then from that midpoint to here. So imagine that I've got this angle going like this. Now it wants to try and draw a curve following those lines as closely as possible. So it's starting here and then it's going to curve back down to this one. All right, now I've created these points here. I'm going to uncomment them and I'm going to run this again. There we go. So here's my midpoint. I've created two. The Bezier curve uses two midpoints. So it's going to be using the gold and the blue. The quadratic one uses one midpoint. Bezier uses two. That's the difference between them. So let's try this. Click, drag, release. And there it is. So a line drawn to here, a line drawn to here, and this curve is being pulled in that direction. If I drew one on the other side, you can see it's pulled into there. If I draw a line straight here, it's curved in. I draw a line straight here, it's arced in as well. So they're all being pulled towards that midpoint. That's what the quadratic curve does. And the further I am away from it, the more of a curve I'm going to see. Okay, so that's the quadratic curve. And you can see the only difference to line two and curve, quadratic curve two is that we have this extra midpoint before we have the ending x. My ending x and y, those are the offsets. All right, that's quadratic curve. And then the Bezier curve, now you can see there's six parameters in here. So we have the two starting points, and then there's two midpoints, and then the ending coordinates. So this midpoint is pulling the first part of the line, this midpoint is pulling the second part of the line, this is where it's ending up. Okay, so I'm going to change my listeners up here once more. So I'm going to call the Bezier function, the Bezier curve. It's going to use both this and this. If I create a straight line here, there we are. So this part of the line segment is being pulled by this. This part of the line segment is being pulled by this handle. If I do it over here, same sort of thing. If I do in this direction, the first half of my line was being pulled by this point. The second was being pulled by this point. So if I draw it the opposite way, starting up here, going down to this side, first one pulled here, second one's being pulled by this part. And that's it. So that is the Bezier curve, the quadratic curve, and the line two. We've got these three methods that we can use to draw line segments. All right, so I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, I will leave a link to the code gist in the description for this video. And as always, thanks for watching.